Episode 180, The Colorful Taters. The next day. Darned horny leopard, get downstairs and cook. In the densely foliaged forest where the sun was blocked out, a girl's roar broke the morning's tranquility. A leopard squirmed out of the hay on the tree branch as he was chased out of the nest. Yet his tail was sticking high up, exuding a gleeful air. Blair wrapped herself cozily with the blanket and seethed with anger. So embarrassing. Rex must have heard us yesterday. (gasps) How am I going to face him? Meow! The little cubs had awoken as well. They were scurrying inside the blanket, searching for their mommy's body with the help of their noses. Blair reached for the stone bowl Roger had placed beside the bed before leaving and started squeezing out the milk as she laid on her tummy before placing it outside. If she didn't feed them now, it would be even more painful to do it later after she put on her clothes. The three baby leopards fought to dash out to surround the stone bowl before starting to lick the milk. Two hours later, Blair figured Roger should be done stewing the food, and only then did she take her own sweet time to put on the chilly clothes. She had initially wanted to get him to fetch her down, but Rex then came down from the third story. You like to eat prickly fruits? Rex jumped down with one hand pressed against the wooden board, landing steadily on the floor in the manner of a powerful beast man. I saw a lot of them in the third story. As Rex's presence was way too strong, plus Blair still felt embarrassed over what happened last night. So her face instantly flushed like a red apple. Hmm. Realizing that her voice sounded a little shaky, Blair swallowed the words she'd initially planned to say back into her stomach. Did you have a good night? Rex's voice sounded right behind her, messing up her heart rate. She forced herself to stay calm as she allowed Rex to carry her while he jumped down the tree. Ever since the cubs started eating meat, their bodies had grown firmer. Today, they climbed out on their own, their short little limbs hugging around the tree trunk flat against the walls as they cautiously made their way down. The delighted Blair called out softly, Roger, come quick and see this. Roar! Third fell down as he pricked up his ears and twisted his head toward his mother as one of his hind legs wasn't firmly gripped onto the tree bark. On the way down, he fell upon eldest and second, resulting in the three cubs tumbling into a heap on the ground. Babies! Blair hurried over to check on them. There was a pile of accumulated snow at the roots of the tree. Add to that the fact that the cubs were of petite sizes and light weight, they quickly got up after they landed on the ground. They shook off the snow on their bodies and merrily spun circles around their mommy's legs. Blair heaved a sigh of relief. Roger lifted the pot lid to check on the stewed meat, then said, Blair, hurry over and eat. I boiled the water for you to wash your face. Never mind the cubs, they'll be fine. Hmm... Blair glanced at Rex. Feeling much calmer now, she invited him to join them. Come and eat with us. Rex looked towards the small stone pot on the fire. He could see that there wasn't much food, and so figured that that was what Blair was going to eat for the entire day. His vision then turned to Roger, whose nostrils were flaring and expression was giving off a clear message. If you come over, I will bite you to death. No need. Rex said. I'll go and pick prickly fruits. With that, he grabbed the tree bark and climbed into the tree hole. When he came down again, he was in his tiger form and holding an animal skin bag between his jaws. After one final look at her, he ran off. Blair sat down beside Roger and mused to herself as she quietly gazed at Rex's back view. We're back to the way we used to be in the City of Beastmen. What are you looking at? Eat up. Roger placed a bowl of food in front of her and forcibly made her turn her head to the front. Blair slapped his hand away, feeling anger surge inside of her as she recalled what happened last night. The leopard cub's stomachs were like a bottomless pit, 
They just drank milk, yet here they were asking for cooked food. Blair filled a small bowl of meat for them and placed it on the ground for them to eat by themselves. After breakfast, feeling bored, Blair went to look at the water hole. The water wheel made clicking noises as it spun, like a worn and rusty piece of machinery. A layer of ice had formed over the bamboo and was extending inwards. If left to its own devices, it would become completely sealed sooner or later. Most of the water surface had turned to ice, and ripples could only be seen on the iceless surface near the water wheel. Caspian? Blair tossed a pebble into the water. Very quickly, a blue merman floated to the surface and gazed at her with misty eyes. Blair suddenly realized something was amiss. Isn't your nest inside? How did you know I'd come? I was sleeping under the water wheel so I can see any beast man who walks by. I only constructed that nest for the female to live in. Caspian smoothed his blue hair, which spread out in the water in a vibrant and flowy manner like seaweed. Caspian blew at the cold air and only then became sober. He said with a smile, This water wheel is awesome. Water that it brought down is a much higher oxygen content. It now feels much more comfortable underwater. Blair smiled too. I'm relieved to hear that. There isn't enough food in the water, is there? I'll ask Roger to bring smoked meat over. Caspian, leaning by the shore, casually flapped his fishtail. No need. I can transform into a human and go to the river to catch your prey. Okay. Blair thought to herself that if he was to live here for a prolonged period, they had to put fish into the water hole. Else he would finish all the fish around here. Ice is forming around the water bucket. Seems like regular maintenance is in place. I'll go fetch some hot water to melt the ice. Blair waved a hand at him and then turned to leave. With nothing better to do, Caspian smashed the ice on the water surface, then glided into the depths of the water with a block of ice in his arms. At noon sharp, Rex came back with a full bag of stuff. Blair, lazing around in her bed, instantly got excited at the sight of the food he brought back. What did you bring back? You've been gone for so long. Roger wrinkled his nose and transformed into a human. Did you run into the scorpion tribe? Blair's smile instantly faded. I'd strengthened the defenses of the tiger tribe, so they were discovered the moment they came, Rex said after transforming into a human. He wrapped an animal skin around his waist, then poured out the contents of the bag. There were chestnuts, as well as a large quantity of oval-shaped objects. Blair's mouth widened, completely forgetting the threat posed by the scorpion tribe. Potato! This is stone fruit, corrected Rex. Potato, stone fruit, pretty much the same thing. Blair was thrilled. She said with certainty as she vigorously sniffed the potatoes, these were dug out from the soil, weren't they? although all she could smell was an earthly stench. Rex's expression remained solemn, though his eyes were sparkling as he said, Hmm, I know you like to eat vegetables, so I asked the tribe what fruits can be eaten in this season. I was told that only prickly fruits and stone fruits are edible now. From where I came from, this is called potato. So it turned out potatoes exist in this world too. I love potatoes. Blair scooped up quite a few potatoes, feeling an urge to just eat them raw. So the stone fruits that Zeke mentioned were actually potatoes. If she had known then, she would have gone to dig it early on. Potatoes were a form of sustenance, too. They could be eaten by simply boiling. Also, there were other cooking methods, like deep frying and barbecuing. Their menu would become much more varied in the future. She finally found a source of staple food. Roger glanced at the food on the ground, then questioned with a raised eyebrow. Why didn't they tell me when I asked? Stone fruits only turn ripe after the cold season. They only started to ripen now, explained Rex. Roger hated that explanation. He picked up one and wiped it with his skirt before handing it to Blair. Here, eat this one. 
Blair shook her head, then suddenly froze after taking the potato from him. Why is it purple? Have they been exposed to the sun? Green potatoes are poisonous. Rex's solemn expression grew gentler as he gazed at her and said, Not only are there purple ones, there are also green, red, and white ones. As he spoke, he found stone fruits of these few colors. It's just the yellow ones tend to ripen first, so I dug out more of them. I only came back now because I spent some time trying to find all the colors. Rex felt glad that he had found all of them. Blair is still as playful as ever. She seems attracted to all these colors. Blair was stunned as she compared the two stone fruits of different colors side by side. They aren't potatoes? She sniffed the yellow stone fruit in her hands. That muddy stench was identical to that of a potato's. She then sniffed the purple stone fruit and realized that the muddy stench was somewhat fainter. Would they not taste the same? No, but she loved potatoes! Blair took a small bite of the yellow-skinned stone fruit. It was crunchy and bland. She then took a bite of the purple-skinned stone fruit and found that although it was a tad tougher, the taste was pretty similar. She then found another green-skinned one and chomped on it. The difference was starker here. This one tasted like plants and had sufficient water content. Finally, she tasted the red-skinned one and found, to her surprise, that it was slightly sweet. Is this fascinating stone fruit really a potato? She felt very worried. Roger, help me cook a few stone fruits, one of each color, said Blair anxiously as she pulled Rex towards the entrance. Rex, take me to the stone fruit plants. I want to confirm if they're the potatoes that I know. Okay. Rex circled his arm around her waist before jumping down the tree hole. Roger chased to the entrance and frustratedly took a bite from the muddy stone fruit as he watched their back views disappear. Ugh, tastes horrid. Roger tossed the fruit away and went to start a fire as he was told. The snow had stopped today, but the air remained piercingly cold. Yet, in places where sunshine prevailed, it felt very warm. The accumulated snow outside the abodes had yet to be cleared. Looking around, they found themselves in a white and flawless world. Blair found her legs sinking into the snow up to her knee level the instant she stepped onto the ground. With much effort, she pulled out her leg, only to see that her boots were now filled with snow. How far is it? Blair felt devoid of strength as she looked at the snowy ground. Rex crouched down beside her. Let me carry you. His back was very broad, his tanned back muscles bulging, and his two arms ridiculously strong, even thicker than someone's head. In its relaxed state, his muscles bulged up, and the veins could be seen popping indistinctly. It could be said that his body was muscular to its greatest limit. If it became even a little more muscular, one might fear that he would just explode and die. That body, symbolizing power, induced fear in someone just with its mere sight. However, Blair, who knew his warm heart, smiled and climbed on it. The female's body was light as a feather in Rex's perspective. He cautiously stood up, afraid that if he were to exert strength, she would be carried away by the wind. It's on the fringe of the village. I'll reach there in no time. Hold on to me tightly, said Rex in his deep voice. As he didn't dare to use too much strength, he could only instruct Blair to hold on to him tightly. Blair responded with an, hmm, then circled her arms around his neck. The next moment, Rex broke into a sprint. The sudden shifting of gravitational force caused Blair to lean backward. If she hadn't hooked her arms around his neck, she would definitely have been thrown off. With Rex's incredible speed, the scenery on both sides rapidly shifted backward. The icy wind made it difficult for Blair to open her eyes, so she could only bury her head in his shoulders and wrap herself with her hat. <laughs> <laughs>